Hello and welcome to Food Tech 101. Now today I'm going to introduce a new piece of equipment and that is a dehydrator. Now what, you might ask, is a dehydrator? Now a dehydrator is a device that uh, you plug into, into the mains and it emits heat and it slowly dries the moisture out of food. Why might you need that, for example? Well, there's a number of dishes you can make with that and I'm going to demonstrate one today. But another good reason for using a dehydrator is to preserve food. Now, bacteria needs certain conditions in order to thrive. It needs, um, it needs a food source, something like a protein. It needs a correct pH environment, not too acidic, not too alkaline. It needs time and it needs moisture, lots of moisture. So when you draw the moisture out of food, you can preserve that food for much, much longer because there's no one of the ingredients that bacteria need is taken away. Now in particular, um, the kind of foods that you might need to dehydrate is, for example, fruit. If you have, uh, if you went fruit picking or you have a, a massive amount of fruit or fruit that's easily perishable, uh, maybe you bought a, uh, some strawberries on the cheap or some berries or something, they have a very, very short lifespan because within a day or two they'll start to go off. So what you could do is you could preserve them by withdrawing the water out of them by putting them in a dehydrator. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to make, uh, I'm, going to <coughs> I'm going to dehydrate some fruit. And I'm going to call this nature's candy. Because what happens when you dehydrate the fruit, when you take the water out, all you're left with uh, is, you've still got the fibre, but the sugars and the flavours are concentrated and it changes the texture as well. So they become a little bit like, like a sweet treat, but they're a sugar-free uh, a, a sugar sweet treat. Well, they're not sugar-free, they have natural sugars in them. So I'm going to uh, experiment with different types of fruit and see what results we get. So, I'm going to call this episode, How to Make Nature's Candy. So this is our dehydrator. So let's take the lid off. What it is is a series of shelves on which you lay your fruit or whatever it is you're doing. And we're going to experiment with different things today. Uh, whatever it is you're doing, you lay it out here. So this is the base. Uh, you turn it on. As you can see, heat comes up from the center base and it blows through all the different layers that you put on. Now today I'm going to experiment with dehydrating a number of different fruits. I'm going to have some apple, I'm just going to slice it thin. I'm going to have some pear, some kiwi, I've got some uh, clementines. I'm just going to leave, uh, put the segments in and I've got some banana. Now like I said, this is a particularly good technique when you've Say if you went apple picking and you got loads of apples, you know what to do with them. And fruit go off, I mean, they don't, they don't last forever, they go off pretty quick. Some fruits take longer than others. But a good way to do it is to dehydrate. So what we're going to do is we'll cut them into thin slices. So I've chopped out the apples now, I'm just going to lay them out on my tray. It's my first layer. Next up, pears. Now, cormorant pears are a really tricky fruit. One minute they're rock solid, the next minute they're, they're, they're overripe. But the good thing about conference pears is that the seeds are so small, we don't really need to decore it. So what I'm just going to do is slice it up into thin slices, and that'll be my next layer. Layer number two. Next, kiwi. Now, I have no idea how kiwi are going to come out. This should be really interesting. Same procedure. I'm going to cut them really fine, lay them out, dehydrate them, see what it tastes like. In particular with these ones, these ones are pretty rock solid, so they're not even ripe yet. So they normally develop flavour or sweetness when they're ripe. That's just when they're going soft. So these ones are rock hard. I'm not quite sure what they're going to come out like. Are they going to be sour? Are they going to be sweet? I have no idea what the texture is going to be like. But this is a really interesting one. What on earth are kiwi going to be like when it's dehydrated? So have a think and let me know, how do you think this kiwi is going to come out like? 
dry, tough, crispy, sweet, sour? Answer in the comments. Next, I'm going to try a few clementines. Now I've got a bit of space left on this shell because I'm only really using half of it for my clementines or tangerines. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to dehydrate one more thing. One of my favorite fruits, a mango. Dehydrated mango. That's delicious. And finally, I'm gonna have the banana layer. Now, banana in particular, a really good one to dehydrate because if you buy a big bunch of bananas, they can be green one minute, but if you don't use them for a couple of days, you come back, they're, they're fully ripened and they can be very quickly over -ripened. Now, the good thing with overripe bananas, I mean, even if it gets really over and they almost go black, you can still use them. Uh, if you check in Food Tech 101, now back catalog of videos, there's one for banana cake or banana bread, and that uses overripe bananas. That's a really easy one to, to make, and it's really, really tasty. So we could still use them, but if you wanted to have them as an actual fruit, dehydrating is a really good way to go. And here we are, we have our apple layer, our mango and clementine layer, our kiwi layer, our pear and our banana. Okay, now let's have to compile them. Not quite sure exactly what logic to use, but I'm going to think probably the ones with the most water content at the bottom. Layer one. Next, I'm going to go kiwi. That's quite high water content. I'll make that my layer two. Next, I'm going to go here for layer three. Apple. Layer four. And finally, banana for layer five. So there we have our fruit tower, as it were. Pop the lid on. Now all we have to do is turn it on. And come back in a few hours and see what we've got. So, uh, my fruit has been dehydrating now for about, about six or seven hours. Take the lid off, let's get an idea. I'm gonna lay them all out first to begin with. This is the mango and orange. Then you've got the banana. Then you've got the apple. Then you've got the pear. And finally you have Kiwi. As you can see, because the water's come out of them, they've reduced quite a bit in size. I'm going to let them cool, and I'm going to put them each, each of them in a separate bowl. So let's look at them, and then see what it tastes like. Our fruit candy, or our fruit crisps, or our fruit leather, depending on you know, how you want to refer to them. They're out, uh, out of the dehydrator now. Let's just try a few and get an idea of what they actually taste like. So I'm gonna start with some mango. Bit of mango here. You can see the consistency, the consistency wise is like, um, it's like crisp. Um, you can dehydrate them to different levels. If you want them a bit chewier, uh, then you just dehydrate them slightly less, leave a little bit more water in them. They become more chewy and flexible like leather. Or you can go right away and dehydrate them completely so they end up with the consistency of actual crisp. But these will probably be like mango crisps. Mmm, 
If you're trying to get off um, snack food or sugars and want some natural alternatives, it's a great natural alternative. Mango. So far so good, very nice. Mm. Next, I'm going to try the pear. Again, completely dehydrated down. Let's try this one. Mmm. Again, all the sugars have been concentrated into like a... Um, all the flavours have been intensified and um, with the texture of, a, of like a crisp. Now again, like I said, you can do them a little bit softer so they're a bit more chewy, but this works out really well. So it's like you have a consistency of... You can see, it breaks like a crisp. A little bit of a chewiness on it, but mostly like a crisp. And then... Mmm. Really good. Try some banana. Now, I think with the banana, I would usually do this with bananas that were more ripe, so they're sweeter. But let's see what this one tastes like. Mm. Quite nice too. Because they have a lot more sugar in them, um, these are a little bit more flexible. But they're nice too. The good thing about banana in particular, they go off. They can go off really, really quickly. So even when they're going really brown, really spotty. You can dehydrate them and you get like a really nice, flexible, chewy banana leather. Next, one of the ones I wasn't sure about is a kiwi. So let's see what this one tastes like. Alright. I think maybe that could have been dehydrated a little bit less. Quite chewy. And the kiwi wasn't ripe to begin with, so it's got a more of a tangy flavour than a sweet flavour. Chewy, but not my favourite, but still quite nice. Apple, I've had, I've had apple, the idea apple before, so it should be nice. Mm. Mm, I like the idea apple. More chewy than the actual crisp consistency. Mm. Now the one I haven't had before, a dehydrated clementine or orange. Now these, they don't look very appetizing because they're all shriveled up. Um, but let me see what they taste like. Okay. Weird. It's chewy. Uh, with a little bit of crunch on it. And it's got the concentrated flavour of the, um, the orange. But, but almost like a baked orange it tastes like. Mm, not bad. The parts I dehydrated more are like, um, like an orange crisp. Almost like an orange what's it. Which is weird. But a bit more mango. Overall, I think that we're going to say that's been really, really successful. And the great thing is now, as I put these in a plastic container, and they'll stay preserved for ages. And there I have it. A dehydrated snack whenever I fancy something a little bit sweet. And the good thing about these is that now these can last for ages. They, they, they could literally set this for, for months once you're taking all the water out of them. Remember that that's one of the ways we can preserve food because bacteria, they like moisture, they like a food source, they like time, and they also require uh, the correct pH balance, so not too acidic and not too alkaline. So by taking away one of its properties, uh, for example moisture, it means that bacteria uh, it can't thrive or can't thrive as, as, can't be as productive. That's why we can have dried food in the cupboards for, for years at times. So in taking all the water out of this, we can, we've now got a product that could literally keep, I don't know how long for, certainly months, if not, I don't, I'm not going to say for years, but certainly, certainly a long time. So whenever I fancy a sweet craving now, I don't have to go to chocolate or sweet or anything, I can go straight to my, uh, my, my goodie box of dehydrated fruit. Once again, thanks for joining us at Food Tech 101. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. One thing I want you to do for me is tell me what would, what would you dehydrate? What favourite foods would you have or what fruit would you, would you dehydrate? There are other things you can dehydrate, for example, I've got some mushrooms in there, 
I'm going to do some savoury mushrooms so we can have some savoury treats as well. Um, but what would you dehydrate? So in the comments below, tell me the kind of things, your favourite fruit that you'd love to dehydrate or your favourite savoury things that you'd love to dehydrate. Just put them in the comments below. Once again, thanks for joining us at Food Tech 101. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Food Tech 101 is now on Facebook and Instagram. And we're also contactable via email at admin at foodtech101.co.uk. As always, my name's Mr. Liebert. Or you? Yeah, yeah, you. You can call me sir. Of things we know.